Hi, Captain Mike from Forbes Fishing, and in today's episode, I have highlights from a week-long fishing trip in Cape Charles, Virginia. And no, I'm not fishing with Mini Pearl. That's my nephew Ross, who you've seen in other videos, and he is cranking in on a really nice keeper-sized Kobe. You Jersey guys know that we do get them uh, up our way once the water gets warm enough, and I've certainly had one to the side of my boat, but hadn't landed one yet. Uh, for this trip, I had to tow the boat all the way down to Virginia uh, by way of the Cape Lewis Ferry, uh, but it was a really, really great trip. So stay tuned for the highlights. So this is our buddy Mark cranking in on a on a keeper size uh, cobia and you can see him sporting back. his four ribs yeah. Raritan Bay fishing shirt uh, a little plug there uh, anyway uh, you may see the tag hanging down from Mark's rod and, and the tag on the rod that we saw in the beginning was also Mark's and, and you know fishermen are, are very superstitious so uh, Mark had bought that rod the very first day uh, left the tag on it for some reason, I can't exactly remember why, but he caught a fish with it. So then he goes out the very next day and buys another rod, and we left the tag on that, and he caught another fish on that. So I suspect those tags will never come off those fishing rods. Get him, Justin, get him. Got him. Tell him who's boss. You sure it wasn't big enough? This is Fish Whisperer Ed talking this one to the surface. It ends up being a little short, so after a photo, he gets released. You should probably get on the other side of here. Uh, small. Here's Mark's son, Justin, bringing one in now. Nice job, Justin. Yeah. Deeper, deeper. Dance them, Justin. Let's get a couple more. You got two rods up there or one? Get something in the water. Get them in there. Boy, I'm three for three in the head, though. <laughs> God damn it, right? Boy. That's right. Uncle Mark, is my rod is the killer coming back or what? Nice fish, Roscoe. Beast, dude. Cleaning a cobia is uh, very similar to other fish of this shape. We're gonna start behind the fin, and we're gonna go uh, out towards the nose on an angle there. Uh, there's some meat up there in that kind of back shoulder area, so make sure you don't leave it on the carcass. Then we're going to go down the uh, backbone with the knife with our initial cut. I like to flip the fish over and make those two initial cuts on the other side. Um, and then sometimes when you take the fillet off of the one side, it just makes it a little more difficult to uh, to make those two cuts. So I just I just do it before I take the fillets off, but totally up to you. Okay, your next cut is going to take your fillet knife and ride it down those bones until you reach the spine. Uh, and you're gonna go uh, all the way down from head to toe and do that. Up near the head area though, uh, you're not gonna get all the way to the spine. You got the rib cage that's gonna kinda stop you at that point. 
Okay, from the rib cage down, you're going to be able to hop over that spine and basically cut down uh, through the other side of the fish, riding those bones. Uh, what I do around the rib cage, some people cut right through it uh, and then trim the bones out later. Uh, what I just do, you know, these fish have plenty of meat on them. I just ride the knife over those rib bones and leave the whole rib cage and gut pack kind of intact with the carcass. I skin a cobia just like I skin a striped bass. I don't hold the blade angled towards the cutting board. I hold it parallel with the cutting board. And these fish have a huge bloodline down the side. In fact, uh, you know, the first eighth inch of meat uh, is going to be that red bloody meat that tastes horrible. So if you hold your knife straight, yes, you are going to leave some uh, clear meat on the skin, but you're going to leave a vast majority of that red meat on the skin as well, which you really don't want to eat. It really makes the fish uh, taste fishy. Okay, now all you have left is that center bloodline, and I'm basically doing like a V-notch, um, trying to carve that out. And, and I really want to get all that off the fish. Uh, again, no one really wants to eat that. It doesn't taste good. Uh, and quite honestly, it's got the concentration of... Uh, heavy metals that every game fish will have uh, will be more highly concentrated in that uh, red red meat. So just get rid of it. You're, everyone who eats it will appreciate it more. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing. If you really enjoyed this channel and the content, consider purchasing one of my four ribs fishing shirts. And you could see them on my storefront on my main page. So thank you and tight lines.